boys and girls. Are you ready to have fun? You watching me watching you watching. Hello and welcome to Recipe for Success. I'm Betty Lee and before we start cooking today, we're going to talk about where you get your food from. Well, thanks to the power of free enterprise, about three of every four people live within 100 meters of a Costco, a Walmart superstore, or both. Big chains like these are doing so well that the local independent grocers that used to serve most neighborhoods have all but disappeared. But believe it or not, there is a downside. The last one person out of four, they live in what we call a food desert. Sounds unpleasant, right? Well, some people would say a food desert is a rural or urban area where adequately fresh and healthy food is not available. But I prefer to think of it as an invitation to imagineer your meals. That's why today, we're going to look at some of my favorite examples of food desert cuisine. Now, this is a Ruffles casserole. And yes, I know it looks fancy, but all of these ingredients can be found at a typical gas station. I've seasoned it with a packet of chili lime peanuts for added protein. Kids will love it if you garnish this with Cheetos. I know I do. Now just look at this hearty broth, chock full of wholesome ramen noodles. You would never guess just by looking that the main ingredients include extra spicy Slim Jims and refreshing Coca-Cola. Don't worry, Mormons and diabetics can make this recipe with new caffeine-free Coke Zero. One thing that discourages many food desert dwellers is scurvy. Well, luckily, if you have a dollar store nearby, Tang and Del Monte fruit twists are usually on sale this time of year. Fruit twists are perfect for fighting off all kinds of vitamin deficiencies, as long as you eat an awful lot of them. That's why I make this delicious apple pie with six boxes of apple-flavored fruit twists instead of actual apples. As you can see, just because you live in a food desert doesn't mean you can't have a good dessert. With just weeks to go before continental elections in the North American Union, the opposition party has been frantically combing its ranks for a suitable candidate to take on the political force of nature known as President Tom Cruise. Unwavering public support for the president comes despite a first term which saw not only the return of the military draft, but also the introduction of a new system of federal slavery for thought criminals and their children. Once seen as unassailable, the president is now vulnerable due to the total collapse of the world economy caused by a combination of inept government policies and really clever banking. So now it's anybody's race, and the opposition party has finally selected a candidate to seize this opportunity. That candidate is... The Electronic Dialer Mark 501 Compact Edition. Ed 501C, as it prefers to be known, is a so-called robocall machine which gains sentience after a freak incident involving solar flares and a bottle of Bud Light. President Tom Cruise lacks integrity and sincerity, qualities which I have been programmed to emulate perfectly. Ed 501C has been involved in politics his entire life, working for all major parties over the years through his campaign work in every region of the continent. He played a pivotal role in helping Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker beat a recall election by telling thousands of voters that their signature on the recall petition counted as an actual vote. <laughs> Good times. Back in 2011, he was involved in a successful disinformation campaign which led Canadians to elect their first Android Prime Minister. He's also the ghostwriter of U.S. Senator John McCain's unofficial autobiography, Me and My Black Baby, which was a bestseller in Georgia during the 2000 Republican primary. Every day, I speak to approximately 150,000 voters on the telephone, and this personal touch allows me to either inspire their support or convince them that their polling station has been moved to the local Hells Angels Club. There have been some complaints from insiders who say they feel former Governor Mitt Romney was due for the nomination. You can't argue with numbers, and market research consistently showed that Ed 501C had a stronger connection with voters in the organic demographic. In fact, Ed's closest rival during primary elections turned out to be Cashomatic X9000, a Citibank ATM who ran a well-funded campaign but could never quite escape allegations he was a tool of big Wall Street banks. 